morning. I'm Hayden. I'm Aaron. And we're the Vegan Voyagers. And we're at Jekyll Island. It's our second week in Savannah, and we came back to Jekyll Island to watch the sunrise and to take some hopefully cool photos. Yeah, it's super cold out here this morning, but hopefully we got some really cool shots. So Aaron is on his way back home to Indiana. He has to go to a funeral, unfortunately. So he's gonna be gone for this weekend, so you're stuck with me. I don't know what we're doing, but hopefully it's cool. And I'll see you guys later. And we're gonna go to the airport. Here we go. Hayden's birthday, we decided to come out here and have a fantastic dinner to celebrate her birthday. So, so we're gonna eat all the foods. <laughs> Walnut fig tapenade. 
shiitake bacon, asparagus, and red bell peppers. And I've got them all up in a nice little pork tortilla. Again, so good, so delicious. So good, I think maybe last time was better. If you're coming, go for the flatbread and the seitan and French toast. Definitely get the, the cheese plate, yeah. which was a little bit different this time, which was kind of nice. They didn't have the fig salami, but the, we did get the tapenade, which we didn't get last time. <sighs> so delicious, I'm gonna be sad to leave this place. Yeah, no matter what, definitely make a stop here. Fox and Fig in Savannah. Now we're off to our ghost tour. So we are in Johnson Square. We're at the Sundial where we were told to meet and we're a little bit early. So we're gonna sit here. There's a lot of drunk people here. It's St. Patrick's Day is this weekend and I guess that's a big deal. They're like, we don't do tours the day before Thanks Patrick's Day. Thanks, Thanks Patrick's Day. <laughs> Thanks Patrick's Day. Thanks Patrick's Day. <laughs> So we're gonna wait and then we're gonna go. And we are considered most haunted city in the United States. That's what we heard. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why we're here. Yeah. Very good. Um, now people say, what makes fans haunted? We have had a lot of tragedy in our history here. Fires, epidemic shell fever, the kind of fevers, hurricanes, and also we had an earthquake in 1886, believe hmm. it or not. And we also had one of the most bloodiest battles of the American Revolution take place here. So whenever you have all that type of tragedy in the area, you're going to have a lot of activity. It will also is called a necropolis. A necropolis is a city of the dead. We do believe that we have thousands of bodies buried in the city. So the battle I'm going to tell you all about is going to see Savannah. It took place October 9th, 1779. It lasted roughly around 55 minutes. In 55 minutes, 1,150 men died. Wow. A lot of men in a very short time frame. And only less than 100 of those were British. So really with a slaughter of the Patriot side, so what happened was the British only gave the Patriot side around 24 hours to bury their dead. That's not a long time, we're talking about thousands of bodies. So they're placed on mass graves. But I always tell everybody here in Savannah, it's hard to find a place that's not haunted. Cool. Your hotels, your restaurants, your stores. If you ask staff they have any ghost stories, I guarantee you can tell you something. Because there's so many hauntings. I kind of see the stairs have a lot of candlelit tables. And one of the waitresses, her job in the night was go in those dining rooms and blow out the candles. She went in, she put all the candles on the table, along the walls, get ready to close down for the night. Something told her that she better go check the dining room out before she went downstairs. But she's glad she did because she went back in there, the candles were relit. Now the tavern is down below, it's actually in the basement of the house. It is haunted by a little boy who they call Magumbo. They do believe him to be about seven, eight years old. He's very mischievous, like most kids are at that age. Uh, they often will hear like dice and thumb against the wall. At night, they'll put the chairs and tables are cleaning up. Come out next day, they're all over the floor. He's also been known to throw wine bottles out of the racks. <laughs> One of the bartenders she's been working 20 years has actually physically seen wine bottles come flying on the racks. And the funniest thing he likes to do is lock ladies up in the bathroom. 
I think he targets us ladies probably because we get more scared than guys do. And he probably gets a little more fun of it. Now the house is haunted by the last owner. Her name was Margaret Gray Thomas. She was born in a house in 1871 and she died in the same bedroom and the same bed she was born in 80 years later in 1951. Now she likes to mess with the staff here. She often will move furniture around. They open the door in the morning and a particular dining chair has been pulled away from the table like somebody ate dinner the night before. Uh, she moved knickknacks around like statues and pictures and also it's very common to go in a room and suddenly go fly across the room like a candlestick. Now they smell women's perfume in the house a lot, like a rose smell and also a cigar. When they close down for the day, they hear footsteps in the house. They always investigate and never see find anybody. This house is very strange. Um, we have actually have seen windows, uh, the curtains move, uh, the blinds. Sometimes they don't have windows or curtains in there. But they like move out of the way like somebody's standing there and there's a bed there at night. We have a cemetery in 1750. The last person buried here in 1853. It is six acres. We do believe between nine and 10,000 people are buried out here. It's a very rough estimate because of multiple layers of burials, similar to two or three deep. Okay, you gotta kinda close to see her. She's right oh, there. Yeah. You see her? There's like a lady wearing like a red or pinkish dress there. Yeah. And there is an orb next to her, and I think yeah. there's something next to her as well. I can't figure that out. But she looks she's kinda to me she's kinda looking down at something. Huh. Um now possibly I think it could possibly be Mary Habersham. She would have been the mother of James Habersham Jr. She is buried in the vault with her husband and her three sons. Little boy and little girl's face. Oh, weird. Oh, wow. Yeah. They say if you come in here in the witching hour, which of course is midnight, that you're out here and all of a sudden you hear like all these little children giggling because there's so many children here. This is the beginning scene of Forrest Gump where the feather comes down. And right here is where the bench was where he told his life story. Right behind the scaffolding. So that tour was pretty cool. Especially because yeah. it was a private tour, <laughs> all to ourselves. It was awesome. Yeah, it was great to learn a lot of the history of the city and just see some of the old buildings, a lot of the old architecture, listen to some really cool ghost stories. There's some really cool ghost stories here. There's a, there's a hotel called the 1790 Hotel. There's the girl in the window and it scared the <laughs> head out of me. And I wish we got that on camera. It wasn't rolling at the time, but she was like, oh, you see Anna? And I turned around and I was like, holy F. <laughs> like, it was nuts. But it was really cool. Savannah Walks tours, our tour guide was great. Plus it was all to ourselves. And we learned that they filmed some of Forrest Gump here. Yeah, we had no idea. All right, so we're out for the night. We're gonna go home and eat our cheesecake in bed. Ooh, cheesecake. Good night. So we edited our photos from the night that we were at the cemetery and we totally caught spirit couple. If you can see, the guy on the left is like wearing a colonial style jacket with a white shirt and then this is some kind of woman in a dress next to him. It looks like they're holding hands. Super cool. He's got kind of a crazy looking face. And that's like way back in the back of this photo. We are all packed up and we are out of here. That's it. The two weeks we had in Georgia have been kind of interesting. A little cold sometimes, a little warm sometimes, but saw some really cool stuff. We went from freezing, like literal freezing, like our water tanks froze and we woke up with no water. I forgot about that. And um, then it was 75 the next day, so it's been a little wild. But we are excited. We are on our way to Charleston. Weep, weep. But then we'll be back in Georgia. We come back to Atlanta. So we want to thank you for watching and joining us every week. But if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you like what we're doing, hit that like button. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week. See ya.